Hi there! Welcome back to another video on my channel. Today I am in a very different setup than I normally am. I don't think you guys have seen me in this position since I did my last anime video. Or my video where I recommended um, different animes for you guys to watch during the start of COVID. Um, surprise, it's October now and COVID's still a thing. Although I think I'm not supposed to say that word because apparently YouTube doesn't like that word. Um, but oops. So yeah, we're still in a pandemic. Um, but it's October, and I actually had one of my viewers comment on my anime video a couple days ago saying that they really liked it and they wanted to see more anime recommendations or just more anime content in general on my channel. Um, so yeah, I'm going to make another recommendations video, and shout out to Abigail for asking this specifically. Um, but I sat down and I was like, okay, well, what kind of anime content can I do? And I thought, okay, I'll just do... More anime recommendations for the month of October, hashtag spooky season. So these are going to be like scary anime or anime that's revolved around Halloween. If you want to hear more about my spooky horror anime recommendations for Halloween 2020, just keep on watching. <laughs> So I should probably preface this video with the fact that I don't watch a whole lot of horror anime. Or like, I don't watch a whole lot of scary anime in general. Um, I think most people, when they think of scary anime, they think of things like Black Butler, Tokyo Ghoul, Parasite, um, and Attack on Titan. Like, those are all very much would fit under this, I guess, genre. Um, but I'm not going to recommend those because I haven't seen them. Sorry. Um, those tend to be a little bit gorier, I guess, and um, I just I just don't watch a whole lot of that. I'm kind of squeamish. I love horror movies in general, and I can sit and watch a bunch of slasher movies no problem. But there's certain things that I really dislike, or I just I just I'm just squeamish. I'm not meant to be a doctor. I don't like needles. I don't like skin ripping and stuff like that. So um, not saying that they're super gory and horror, but I just don't normally watch them. Um, but I'm sure they're great. A lot of people like the animes I just listed. A lot of people recommend Parasite for me, and I think I started, like, I'm on the first episode or something. Um, but it's, a, I guess it's a little bit more underground. I don't think it's too underground, but it's, like, everybody knows what Attack on Titan is, pretty much. Even if you don't watch anime, you've seen, like, these giant naked bodies, um, <laughs> roaming around. So, but Parasite's one that I hadn't heard of previously, and it's literally just, um, the concept is that this guy's sleeping and an alien parasite tries to take over his body, but it only takes over his hand. So his hand shape shifts into like some gross stuff every now and then. Um, I just don't see the kind of appeal in that. So the recommendations I have for you aren't necessarily the most like monster, bloody, gory, scary things. But there's still things that I think fit the Halloween theme or that they're thrilling in a way. And I'm going to go through with... Um, I don't want to say my least favorite, but I'm going to go f through this video kind of structured like last time. And I'm going to talk about the ones that are like, I think are okay. Um, the ones that I think are better. And then the ones that I super duper recommend. So the ones that are like okay for me that I think fit the theme. I say they're okay because they're more romance than actual horror, but they're spooky. So we're going to do it anyway. Um, if you are craving something that's basically... Twilight with added sexual tension for no reason. Um, I recommend Vampire Night for you guys. It's a really, it's dated. It's an older anime. And I started watching it a few months ago. I don't know why, but I was like, ooh, vampires, let's go. Because I love vampires. And it's literally just this girl. It, the, the, the idea is that there's like one school, but during the day it's a school for humans and at night it's a school for vampires and they have humans volunteer and patrol to make sure the vampires don't cross and eat humans and stuff like that. Um, and this girl ends up in like a kind of romantic relationship with the vampire people. Uh, well, there's two. It's like a love triangle. It's just a lot. And like you have to really be into that specific type of anime to enjoy it, I think. But if you are, then go ahead. Like I said, it reminds me a lot of Twilight, so it might just be fun to binge. 
some people still love Twilight and they like think it's super super good and other people watch it because they think it's super super bad but that it's so bad it's good that's kind of how I feel about this anime so again vampire night check it out the next one I'm going to recommend is also technically I guess romantic although it's a harem anime so I don't know how romantic harem animes can be but if you're somebody who's looking for stuff with a bunch of panty shots there you go this is Rosario um x vampire and I this was actually my first like exposure to anime which is a little, saying a lot um my sister used to watch this years ago i'm talking like when we were in middle school she got into anime before i did i mean technically it's not the first our dad showed us anime when we were wee ones but we didn't know what it was and then adrian started seriously watching anime and she's like oh my god Cassie, you're gonna love this i'm like okay and it was a harem anime and i was like adrian what is <laughs> because it was just panty shots every five minutes basically this guy um, kind of flunks out of normal school and he's trying so hard to get into like a high school type thing and um, He accidentally enrolls in a high school that's meant for just monsters and he's the only human in the school and um, They all like Notice this but don't they all know he smells good like food because he's a person um, But they don't know why but then some of the girls And I say girls some of the girls find out that he's actually human and the first friend he meets happens to be a vampire, hence the title. Um, and then later on, other characters are introduced that are female and there are also monsters. There is a succubus, there's a witch, um, there's a snow person thing, I'm trying to remember. I started rewatching it again because I was missing my sister a little bit <laughs> just to kind of like reconnect with her. Um, and I was like, oh my god. But it's very much a drop. It, it's funny because it's, it's still, like, despite all the panty shots and stuff, it's still a good anime to watch because there's always a fight scene, like, every episode. And there is some action. Um, and it's funny because the main character is just way overpowered, way OP, kind of like One Punch Man, where she really takes down people in, like, one kick, except it's kicking. Um, and there is a story behind it. And so, again, if you're into harem animes, I highly recommend it. Um, you just have to kind of push through the whole, like... Uh, I swear most there's always a scene and I think it's for comedic effect I think these people realize like what they're writing um, but there's literally always a scene where they just say skune over and over again and it lasts for like five minutes straight and there's always dramatic opera music playing um, there's a bat character that breaks the fourth wall um, so you know it is what it is it's a harem anime I think it pokes fun at itself and I still think it's pretty good I'm not definitely not the top on this list, but again, one of the ones I recommend. So now we're going to move into like phase two of things that fit the Halloween theme that I recommend that I've seen. Like, like I said before, there's plenty of Halloween type animes out there or horror animes, but I just haven't watched all of them. Um, but these are ones that fit the kind of Halloween theme that I like and I think a lot of people can get into. So I'm just going to bring up Demon Slayer. I mentioned it in my last video of just like anime recommendations for this year for 2020. It's a very new anime. There's only like one season in a movie I think um, but it's really good. It's not specifically meant to be Halloween-y but this Demon Slayer, this guy's fighting demons and their monsters. I think a lot of anime like you have to remember that mo a lot of them just end up fighting monsters like that's the <laughs> that's the overall theme. So you could really stretch this Halloween theme into a bunch of different like action or genre animes as well or even like medieval stuff I guess. But um, Demon Slayer I still think everybody should watch. I know it's getting more popular but it's still really really good um, and it's got demons so why not? So the second one I'm going to recommend to you is also one that's really, really popular. Not one of my favorites, but I think there's enough people to like it where, like, I think it has an audience. It used to be a lot more popular a few years ago. But it's kind of dwindling down, um, but it's Death, Death Note. And um, if you haven't heard of Death Note before, basically the concept of Death Note is that this guy finds a notebook. And if you have the notebook, it's like a demon notebook type thing. And if you write someone's name down in the notebook, they're going to die. Um, and you can write down how they're going to die and they will die that way. But if you don't write any specific reason down, I think they just die of a heart attack. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. It's been a while since I've seen it. Um, but that's just kind of the premise. And I think what people enjoy about this is because it's very much like a cat and mouse type situation with, with this story. Um, so you have the main character, Light, who finds the notebook. 
And um, on the surface, Light seems like a good person. He's a really good student. Um, his name is Light. I think it's ironic because deep down, he's kind of like a dark, twisted dude. <laughs> um, he has like a god complex where he thinks he can bring justice to people and eventually rule the world with this Death Note thing. Um, also, I should mention, there are kind of like demon monsters around, but they don't really interfere. It's just like the demons connected to the notebook. So it's like him talking to this demon and just talking about his plan. And the guy's just like an observer who eats apples every now and then, you know? Um, but anyway, so Light's the main character, but the cat and mouse things comes into play because there's this guy that's working for the detectives who's like also super smart. And he basically the two of them keep trying to outsmart each other. And um, this guy is figuring out that something's going on and he pretty much knows um, but they're trying to hunt each, down, each other down and outsmart each other because, again, people are dying. Like, you know, even though the only people who are dying are criminals, like, people are dying dying, and the police are investigating, you know? Um, same thing, but then, again, the only reason... I wouldn't like this anime, I guess, but then the one biggest drawback is that, for me, I think, like, there's this really annoying character, and she's, like, the only female character in the show, and um, she's basically, she also finds a death notebook, with, but for a different demon, and she starts killing people too. Um, she turns into like a nuisance for a light because obviously she's meddling with his plan and like his solution to it because she's like obsessed with him. Like she thinks he's hot or something and she wants to be his girlfriend. And so he pretends and he lets her do girlfriend stuff with him um, just to keep the overarching plan going. I don't know, it gets kind of weird. It's really. Again, if I'm speaking really bluntly, and, like, this is just my opinion, I know a lot of people really like this show, um, but I didn't like it because it really just felt like a, like the controlling boyfriend fantasy, um, where you have this one guy with a god complex who's trying to beat out everybody else, and so some people cheer for him because they're projecting their own ideas of power. Um, I know that's a really harsh critique. I don't mean that everybody who watches this show... But I have noticed this pattern of people who, like, idolize light, and I just think it's problematic. Um, but not to say, it's a good show, it's entertaining. Um, I watched it when I was first dating my husband, which was, like, god, six years ago. <laughs> Oops. Um, so that's how old this is, but it's still pretty good. It's spooky in the fact that there's murders happening and taking place, and it's more of, like, a thriller-type thing than, like, a horror, horror, like, ghost story thing. Okay, and then the last one that's, like, kind of good, I mean, it's more than kind of good, I really like it, is uh, Soul Eater. Soul Eater is not a scary anime. It's not horror, but Soul Eater is also very popular. A lot of people like it. This was actually my favorite anime for a very long time, for a couple of years, and this is the one anime that got me back into anime. Um, the concept behind this is that there's these kids that are working for uh, death, right? And they basically hunt down bad souls or demons and stuff or witches and try to collect souls and turn each other like there's a pair so there's one that's the scythe, uh, scythe wielder and the other one that's a scythe and in this scythe is used loosely as just weapon right so basically if you collect a hundred bad souls and give it to death he will turn you into a death scythe which means you will help him reap other people it's like an achievement type thing also, apologies for the sirens. I live in Boston, and you know what's up. Um, but anyway, so yeah, they turn him into a death scythe. Um, and that's the overall goal, and it follows these kids around. Um, but I really like it because there's a lot of action in it. Um, again, there's different demons. There's different monsters around. There's witches. There's It, it has a very like Halloween vibe and artistic thing. There's a guy that's pretty much like a Frankenstein of himself. Um, there's like a golem in one episode, I think. So it's just a new, new monsters are introduced every episode. And I think the writing is really good. I like all the kids. Um, I love Death to the Kid. He was my absolute favorite. And Black Star was pretty cool too. But, um, yeah, I just love the concept of everything of them turning into weapons, turning back. I think the main character too is Maka. She's the girl and she goes through a lot of character development. The ending's a little bit cheesy. Like the ending of the whole show is a little bit cheesy. But it's a really, really good anime. A lot of people like it. And I think this would be a fun Halloween pick if you're somebody who's not into anything that's super duper scary, but you still want that Halloween aesthetic. Okay, so these last two. <laughs> um, these last two 
are two of my some of my favorite animes of all time. They are both, I guess, horror, but I would kind of classify them as thrillers more than horror because they're not like gory or anything, but they still have a very scary concept. Um, so these are the two I recommend most to you guys if you're interested in watching something for Halloween. Um, I binge watch both of these shows in a matter of like days, maybe one day or two days. Like that's how good they are. Um, so let's see, what should I do first? I guess I'll go with the one I just finished yesterday and that is The Promised Neverland. Oh my god, it is so good. So I actually watch a different anime YouTuber, her name's Aki. Um, and she recommended this a few months ago and I haven't watched it until now. They just, I, they, I don't know if they just put it on Netflix, but it's becoming really popular on Netflix. So you've probably already seen the advertisements if you haven't watched it already. Um, but goodness gracious, it is so good. Uh, the Promised Neverland is basically about a group of orphans at an orphanage and, um, and they're trying to escape the orphanage. I don't want to say why, cause it's like pretty much the big plot twist or promise of the show, but basically there's like three main ones with, um, Ray, Emma, Norman. I love Emma. She's everything. Her and I have the exact same morals and personality. So I can't, I love her so much. Um, and Ray is pretty much very, very similar to my husband. So it's fun watching that. But, um, so they're trying to organize and trying to escape this orphanage because something is wrong. Something is dangerous and they're trying to leave. Um, I think there's only one season. I think they're trying. They are planning on making a second season. I know there's a whole manga collection and this is the first anime I've really watched where I've been so invested in the plot and the story that I really really want to read the manga because I I literally can't wait. I felt that way about Haikyuu too because I really liked the story and I wanted to see them win but this one I think they have so many teasers in the beginning to indicate that there's stuff to come in the future that it's really good at world building without giving too much away and I think it's really smart writing um, so I highly recommend that. This will keep you Although there's not too much action back and forth, like there's so much suspense and so many threatening characters that like you you can't help but just sit and watch. It's really really good. So if you're interested in that, just go ahead. The Promise Neverland, super good. Nothing too spooky and scary, but still something that will keep you involved and definitely make you feel like you're escaping with these kids. Okay, so my last recommendation. Oh my god. Um, this is an anime I started watching, or I w watched two years ago. Um, I binge watched it in my dorm in college by myself all night because I just couldn't stop. Um, but it is Madoka Magical Girl. And do not let these art, don't let the art deceive you, okay? This looks like a cutesy anime. I thought it was going to be a cutesy anime. I didn't look too much into it. I just saw the outfits and I was like, yes, I'm sold because I wanted to watch something cute and romantic. It is not. It is not. It is a whole trip. It will mess you up. And it messed me up that night and I needed an emotional support friend because dang. Um, so basically, oh god, Madoka Magical Girls. So um, basically, the premise is that there's these young girls in school um, and this alien cat thing, this creepy ass thing, appears to them and basically tells them, hey, so... By the way, witches exist and they cause people to hurt themselves and they prey on their emotions and do horrible things to people. Wouldn't it be great if you could fight the witches with your magical girl powers that I give you? If you make a contract with me and help me fight the witches, I'll give you a wish and you can wish for anything you want in the world, right? So some of them do, right? And some of them don't. And so basically the plot is that these girls make contracts with this alien cat thing and they go on to fight the witches and um, they do this and they'll use a wish to try to either better their lives or somebody else's lives and it circles around like a group let me think there's one two three four five there's five different girls that kind of goes around and they have sad lives or not all of them do but like for the most part they all have something going on in their life um, but it's a lot it's not cute like the music, okay, the music is good. You hear them fight scenes and action scenes going on, and it is intense. They play, it's like spooky and scary, but also gets your blood pumping. Like, I would work out at the gym with this music, but it's just really intense. And then, like, the art, oh my god, the art, when they go into the witch's lair, is so trippy. Like, each witch is 
is has its own different nest or layer type thing and the drawing just goes crazy like that shit crazy it's like psychedelic and stuff but it's so good i loved it i loved it and the plot in the show is so good you don't really expect what happens to happen at least i didn't and it really surprised me and it's just the resolution at the end is pretty good too most of the times i kind of get disappointed with endings and stories or especially in anime um you know you can kind of tell when they just don't know how to make something end but i really think that they thought about the ending the whole time when they were writing this show and i highly recommend it to people like i just the only thing i would warn is that it it is emotionally heavy at times so you might have to take a break um don't make the same mistake i did and just like put myself through this torture for hours at straight um but it is so good i think it's a perfect halloween anime um, like I said, it's not really gory or anything like that. Like, it's not gruesome. Um, but it, it is scary in the fact, like, it's a thriller. There's definitely undertones of witches and Halloween-type themes. Um, but it's a really well-written story. I really like the drawing style, and I cannot recommend this enough. Like, I think everybody should see this one, for sure. Those are my Halloween recommendations for you guys. I'm sure you guys have more recommendations for me, and if you do... Please leave them in the comments down below. I really want to hear good more recommendations for anime. Um, I'm trying to think of others that I know of. I know we kind of went over some other ones. I know Douglas recommended High School of the Dead for me. But again, it's going to be one of those things where it's like sexy stuff too. I don't mind that. But if you're somebody who doesn't really like that, um, then I probably want to recommend that one. But other than that, those are the ones that I know of. I know a lot of people watch Attack on Titan and they've been recommending that one to me. Haven't done it yet. Maybe I will if qu quarantining is still a thing. Um, but yeah, if you know of any other scary anime, go ahead and leave it below. Um, Japan's notorious for their horror movies, and they do it up, man. They do it to the extreme, and I really appreciate that. Um, if you want a different video talking about Japanese horror films specifically outside of anime, I can also do that for you too. I love them, and I, I think the people who make these video these movies are really good at like getting into like the psychological thriller aspect of it so it's not just scary because things are popping up and scaring you but they're scary because they're inside your head i really appreciate that and i think it takes a lot of work for somebody to do that so if you want to see a video like that go ahead and let me know um until then if you like my content feel free to like this video comment down below and share with a friend and if if you like the other videos on my channel or the other content feel free to subscribe to the channel we'd love to have you and until next time thanks Bye.